Would you like to learn about the CIA triad in cybersecurity? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs, and in today's video, we're going to talk about what is the CIA triad in cybersecurity, why the CIA triad actually matters, and then we'll talk about how confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your systems can actually be achieved. So to begin, what is the CIA triad? Well, the CIA triad really refers to the three core components of security, which is confidentiality, integrity, as well as uh, availability of those systems. So confidentiality is making sure that sensitive information stays sensitive and that sensitive information is only accessible to those that are authorized to use it, which means you have to prior authorize someone to use it to make sure that it's secure. Now, that's what we're talking about with regards to confidentiality. Now, businesses have a duty to maintain the confidentiality of their members' uh, information. So imagine what would happen if somehow accidentally uh, your birthday, your full legal name, your house address, your social security number, or your national identifier number in whatever country you're actually was in, was posted on the internet. Now, the loss of that information, fairly quickly, uh, people would start trying to buy cars in your name and giant screen TVs in your name. Now, what about a business who has a trade secret, a secret formula for whatever they use that makes their food a certain way, or a secret formula for some new chip that makes that chip perform three times better than its competition? Now, that intellectual property or that information is so sensitive that if we had a company like that with 100,000 employees and that trade secret was lost, potentially all 100,000 people could lose their job. So confidentiality is absolutely critical and that's why it's a main element of the CIA triad. So how do we maintain confidentiality? Well, for the most part, it's going to take a full security posture. And when we get to the other things, it's also going to take a full security posture. But we're going to talk at a high level of the things that you would use in your security architecture for confidentiality. One thing that's going to be really key to confidentiality is making sure that if people access the information, it's meaningless to them. So we're going to need very strong encryption. We're going to need some form of strong authentication to make sure that only the people that are supposed to allow to be able to access something or even are known that they are who they claim to be before something else authorizes them to use the system. So that means a strong identity and access management strategy, very strong access controls and means to safeguard data at rest, meaning when it's stored and in transit or in flight, when you're going say between servers or between network endpoints. Now, obviously, if you can't touch the systems, you can't steal any of the information or break the confidentiality. So we'll use things like network security, and we'll use network security throughout uh, this, even if I don't talk about it. Things like network security include route filtering, access control lists, firewall rules, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems, rate limiting, for example, traffic shaping, traffic policing, those kinds of things, micro segmentation. Now, another thing that we'll do to protect the confidentiality of our data is we're going to label it and categorize it. Sensitive data, super sensitive data, data that is not sensitive. And that way we know what's important and we can create a policy to protect that important kind of data. And what we'd be using is data loss prevention technology to do that. There's these data loss prevention systems that will look at the egress or the exit of your network, for example, to see if uh, there's something uh, and some important information leaving your systems that you don't want it to or sensitive information, and it can block it. A data loss prevention system might block the USB ports on a computer, for example, so you couldn't uh, actually even exfiltrate information if you wanted to. Some companies go so far to actually destroy USB ports on servers and other things and workstations so users can't actually pull their actual information. So that's predominantly what we're going to be doing to protect confidentiality. Because any kind of breach of confidentiality whether it's through hacking uh, from an external threat, an insider threat, an accidental exposure from an employee, 
can lead to very large financial losses and organization's reputation could be destroyed and even they could be penalized by regulators. So maintaining confidentiality is going to be critical and that's CIA triad. Now let's talk about integrity. Integrity is super important. Integrity means that the systems and the information contained in those systems are what they're supposed to be. So I'll give you a couple of examples to see how bad this could be. Imagine uh, you've got a physician or a nurse practitioner and they prescribe two milligrams of a medication and a hacker changes that two milligrams to 200 milligrams. Now that's a hundred times the dose. It's, we could have a horrible, uh, horrible result of something like that. Now imagine you had a million dollars in your bank account and you worked hard, you saved it up and then a hacker stole all but $10 of it. Again, that's loss of integrity, and you can see how disastrous this would be. Now, imagine we've got an AI system and a business with numerous AI agents as part, and a full agentic AI system that's going on, and a hacker breaks into that system, and it makes all those AI agents do things, and it bankrupts the business in a matter of a day. And uh, while that business was bankrupted in that single day, uh, somehow 100,000 people lost their jobs. So... I hope you can see why integrity is so critical. So typically with integrity, we're using cryptographic hashes. And with the cryptographic hash, uh, you, can, uh, you can basically make sure the data hasn't been changed. If you'd like to know more about cryptographic hashes, I've got a free CIS, I'm sorry, a free CCSP program on our cyber on this YouTube channel, a free CCSK certification program, as well as a free CISM program. And all three of those certifications will detail encryption fairly heavily, and they're all free. So uh, I'll make sure that team leaves links to that in the description of this video. We also are gonna use version control and audit logs to make sure that we can make sure things haven't been changed in the systems. Because anytime somebody breaches the system or breaches the integrity of the system, they, whether it's changing a route on a router and the traffic doesn't go where it needs to be, uh, whether somebody tampered with the data as we talked about or falsified the data, anytime we put things in the systems that are not supposed to be there, it could damage what the systems are supposed to do. So organizations will have to do regular integrity checks of their system, strict change management processes so they know what's being changed, when it's being changed and how it is and remediate any kind of discrepancies when they find them. Now, obviously we've got to keep people out of system so they don't damage the integrity. And that goes into all your other security components like network security so they can't touch it, physical security so they can't get in the building, what have you. And obviously strong identity and access management systems. Okay, now availability, that's the other key component. So availability means the systems are available when needed. Now, every business needs a different level of availability. We could have a family business that's got a website that can, can handle 99.9% uh, availability of their systems. They can tolerate that downtime. But what if it's an emergency service system where you want to dial 911 or 999, whatever is there in your, in, your, in your country, and you go to pick up the phone because it's an emergency and the systems are down? That could be an absolute disaster. Take a hospital, for example. All the patient's information is stored on the computers and the computers are down. That could be life-threatening. Imagine an air traffic control system where these planes are flying around and the air traffic control people are making sure they didn't crash into each other and uh, the air traffic control systems are being down. So we have these things, some types of systems that need to be up all the time, like 99.999% of the time, which is about five minutes and 15 seconds of downtime. But ever, if the systems are not usable, the business can't support its functions. Now, here's the thing to think about from a cybersecurity. This is where they, we get into the explanation here. If a system is hacked, it might not be available. If a web server is being is in the middle of a distributed denial of service attacks where people are overwhelming it with things that it can't handle, then it's not going to be available for legitimate business. So we have to understand the whole point of security here. Now, the point is, is normally speaking, re, uh, high availability is achieved through redundant systems, very sophisticated failover mechanisms and everything, health checks, load balancing of all different kinds. And that eliminates single points of failure. 
typically very good backups, disaster recovery planning, backup systems that are there, and things that can run during dis disruptions. But we still have to protect against distributed denial of service attacks and other attacks that could take them down. That means full security posture from whether it be network security, IAM, secure coding practices. I mean, the whole spectrum of security to keep these systems protected. Now, making sure that uh, we've got uh, availability, we need to constantly monitor things, determine who can make changes, the impact of changes, what are there. So as you can see, a lot goes into availability. So in this video, we discussed what is the CIA triad. We talked about and explained the CIA triad in cybersecurity. We talked about why the CIA triad of confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the systems matters and how confidentiality, integrity, and availability is achieved, at least at a high, high level security architecture perspective. Now, if you'd like to become a security architect or a cloud architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect or even a network architect, we've got programs to help you build your architecture career, but we also host a free webinar once per week. And on this free webinar, we'll talk about what we do in these various architecture roles, the skills that you need in these architecture roles, uh, how to skip HR so you don't get auto-rejected and go straight to the hiring manager and get hired. We do this once a week. Uh, the, the video is on Zoom, so you can ask questions. We can do anything we can to help you in your career while you're on this free webinar. And you can sign up. The link for this How to Get Your First Architect Job webinar is in the description of this video. In the description of this video, we also have so many guides for your architecture career, guides on how to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect, guides on how to win the architect interview, guides on the best skills for architects, how to earn more in your tech career, and so many other things, and they're all free. So sign up for them. They'll be emailed to you in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now. I hope to see you in a webinar or another video soon. Take care.